Good evening and welcome to the new Bogaisky Hour. I'm happy to be back in Pristina to examine important global and local developments that affect the lives of all Kosovars. And today I'll be focusing on Kosovo's relations with Serbia, with our guests on the Bogaisky Hot Panel, Lulzim Petsi, former Kosovo liaison officer to Serbia and executive director of the Kosovo Institute for Policy Research and Development, Dusan Janic, political analyst and NGO activist, specializing in ethnicity and conflict management. And Naim Rashiti, executive director of the Balkans Policy Research Group. But first, my political commentary on a key international topic is entitled Upheaval in the Balkans. Storm clouds are gathering again in the Balkans. If escalating grievances and national disputes are not resolved, the region could again be engulfed in a spiral of conflict that degenerates into violence. Economically, although GDP growth has been registered in recent years, the impact on living standards is uneven and public expectations remain unfulfilled. Youth unemployment remains high and public frustration with corrupt governments is rising. Political partisan battles are so intense in some countries that opposition parties boycott parliament block legislation and refuse to participate in elections. This is currently the case in Albania, which faces general elections in June, but where the Democratic Party claims that the vote will be rigged. Authoritarianism is rising. Serbia and Macedonia are at the forefront of accusations that ruling parties are appropriating the state and eliminating any viable opposition. After his election as president, Alexander Vucic's Progressive Party now controls Serbia's executive and legislature. Attempted state capture has been even more blatant in Macedonia, where the outgoing Vimro-led government was caught in various abuses of power. Public protests are growing. Serbia has been in the midst of extensive protests against the election of President Vucic. Social networks mobilized thousands of young people calling for the ouster of the government. The protests are an outpouring of years of frustration and official corruption with controlled media and with political manipulation. Where political divisions become ethnified, the prospects for conflict escalate. This is the case in Macedonia, where the formation of a new bi-ethnic government with Albanians has been blocked amidst claims that Albanian leaders aim to fracture the state. Separatism is also exploited by leaders of the Serbian entity in Bosnia-Herzegovina amidst widespread frustration with political institutions and economic stagnation. Conflicts over borders and the non-acceptance of statehood for some countries persist in the region. Tensions are periodically ratcheted up between leaders of Serbia and Kosovo, while Serb nationalists do not accept the permanent independence of Montenegro. In other cases, the removal of borders is seen as a threat, as between Albania and Kosovo. Albanian Prime Minister Edirama recently raised the question of unification and aggravated fears of pan-Albanianism that could break up several countries in the region. EU entry remains a receding ambition in much of the region. Although several countries are candidates for the Union, progress has been stalled because of the EU being preoccupied with internal problems and with public opinion opposing enlargement. There is also disillusionment among citizens in the Balkans that the Union has been complicit in upholding corrupt governments in exchange for a measure of stability. In this vicious circle, failure to reform the state will preclude EU membership and failure to integrate will further aggravate regional conflicts. It is time now for the Bogaisky Hot Seat with our panel on relations between Kosovo and Serbia. And our panelists from left to right are Lulzim Petsi, uh, former Kosovo liaison officer to Serbia and executive director of the Kosovo Institute for Policy Research and Development. Quite a mouthful. Uh, secondly, Dusan Janic, 
political analyst and NGO activist from Belgrade specializing in ethnicity and conflict management. And last but not least, Naim Rashidi, executive director at the Balkans Policy Research Group. Thank Welcome you. to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you and, very much. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is to explore the, the breadth and depth of relations between Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, but let me start with a sort of very general question. Four years after the Brussels Agreement was signed between Pristina and Belgrade, what would be your assessment of the results thus far? Maybe start with you, Lunzin. Yes, <coughs> we cannot look at the results with a black and white uh, camera. Uh, the results are mixed. Uh, there is improvement in the north, mm -hmm. and we cannot uh, deny it. There is improvement in uh, border, uh, integrated border management between Kosovo and uh, Serbia, and there is uh, free movement of people. Mm -hmm. And also we do have and the recent results on uh, telecommunications. So there are some vivid results. But on the other side, what is concerning regarding these relations, imp improving uh, trend of relations, is that this is not a irreversible process. Mm. So the process can go in different direction or it can go in the direction even of uh, open conflict. Mm -hmm. The recent developments that we had in January of this year mm -hmm. with the Russian train tells actually how easy is these two countries to end up in a conflict and to, to, to spark the conflict with a very simple and I can call it uh, archaic provocation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the risk, this is one risk and that's why I think that uh, in terms of the future negotiations between Kosovo and Serbia, EU and both countries should take into consideration building uh, to put in place confidence building measures in security and defense. And this is necessary. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, even if we achieve a uh, comprehensive agreement on normalization of relations mm -hmm. uh, between two countries, and if in this uh, process or in, in, in this uh, agreement, are not emphasized confidence building measures in security and defense, I think that the entire uh, future developments will come to a risk that we have faced recently. Fortunately, it didn't end up in a conflict, mm -hmm. but it could very easily end up there. Dusan, how do things look from Belgrade regarding the agreement? It's a similar, as uh, Petsy told, as basically after the how many years? Four years, we have uh, signed around 28 agreements and so many uh, conclusions, technical agreements, and so on. So on. Uh, this huge, uh, how to say, quantity of the papers. Mm -hmm. In reality, uh, some of, uh, how to say, the measures of the process are working. Mm -hmm. Freedom of movement, uh, they have some good side. Still, there are, in each of the uh, uh, area, some open questions, for example, in the freedom of the movement, still uh, Serbia d d uh, using the old stamps uh, of police from Kosovo moved in uh, MUP, moved in Serbia, or we have some progress in uh, integrated borders management, but uh, no new cross uh, point checkpoints. Serbia is not building that for the moment or the moment, moment is basically four years. Mm -hmm. uh, politically talking, we have some progress. The atmosphere is among the ordinary people, business people is, is looking like normal. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to achieve something more, but basically we have a lot of status at the political level. And that started, that process started immediately after Srebrenica visit of Vucic. The second part of the 2015, we have both elites going on elections and Kosovo and Serbia all year spending three years and a half on elections. When they have the election, they are not doing anything. Uh, that's one. The second, I think that there is something what is, uh, how to say, the structural failure of the process. 
you know, that uh, European Union bureaucracy proclaimed it as the main goal, normalization of the life. Mm -hmm. But they did not create any benchmarks, any criteria. It's looking like sea without any uh, coast. You are tra traveling, you don't know when you will come. And what is the end of the process? The end of the process for Serbia is the full normalization. But they decided not to discuss status issue. Mm. How you could imagine full normalization with open status issue? And that so-called status neutral position is making this process really, really, I would say, weak and uh, uncertain. And the last, as uh, Mr. Petsy said, is the involvement of Russia. At the beginning of the process was contact group for the Balkan. Mm. Russia was a part of the group. In the meantime, Russia was marginalized. And now Russia is going back. Russia and uh, Ankara. Or I could say Erdogan personally. And he's, uh, I would say, the elites. They want to be the player. And they are playing indirectly the really strong uh, game, uh, blo blocking normalization process. Mm. And my final is, Basically, I could not imagine that the people, politicians, who build everything what they have and they know during the 90s, during the conflict, that they could so be, I would say, modern, modernized, that they, that they could so change themselves and to expect the rule of law. No chance. Mm -hmm. Let me turn to Naim, your perspective, but also what's next on the agenda with the agreement? I mean, this is the, uh, this is the key question. Uh, why most of the people are pessimistic is about, because nobody knows what's next. Mm -hmm. The perspective of the process. And that there's no light at the end of the tunnel and we are messing around in the tunnel. Uh, no doubt we had more expectations, much clearer expectations on the process. Everybody knew it's going to be difficult. Uh, yet there is some progress has been made in terms of integrating the north, uh, building trust between the communities in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. I mean, the strange thing, the fact that police, special units have deployed in the north and there was no citizens reaction. Mm -hmm. It's a clear sign. And we've talked to the people that, well, this is what we are told, being told by Serbs, by Belgrade to integrate. And this is, we knew that the police will come here. It's huge. Uh, Kosovo membership to some other international organizations, regional football associations. Yeah. This has been also huge achievements. But the, the frustrating parts are related to the basic, to the claim of European Union for the benefits of the people. Where we have been not for four years, but for since 2011 negotiating car plates, freedom of movement. That's the most frustrating part. Uh, a legal, uh, civil law, uh, functioning of the parallel institutions in Kosovo mm -hmm. that operate. The, f the train was funding, a million and a half was taken from parallel municipality of Zvechan by Belgrade government to design yeah. the train, to paint the train. And it tells you a lot. Uh, then in the mean, Everything, a lot has happened with the European Union, Crimea, and everything. And the EU lost the pace from having been one of the most successful foreign policy, lost the, the, the pace, and the lost the momentum, and lost the direction of the train. Uh, the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia is, is like a boat in the sea. And if there are no, and where the boat is, has many holes, if there are no uh, stations, destinations set, one, two, three, will sink. Mm -hmm. And it can be, become irreversible. Uh, I think the risk is now that we don't see a clear path where we're heading to the next phase, Brussels II. Where's the second agreement? We don't see. We see in Belgrade a tendency to implement the first agreement sufficient to, to, to open, to negotiate chapters and buy time without pressure uh, or feeling the pressure to re-engage and think to, toward a second agreement. Here in Pristina, we see a fear uh, on, the, on this process, especially in, on the implementation of the association of municipalities. It's not that Pristina cannot implement this, 
we think to implement. But Pristina fears that there is no the next phase. Mm -hmm. If they implement the association, they cannot derive a new process. And there is where it's stuck, gets stuck the normalization, or ends for time being the process of normalization of relations, which is far from sufficient. Mm -hmm. Uh, time to t is to talk about jurisdictions. We know that we are not going to come soon to the full normalization or mutual recognition, but what's next? And we're seeing that actually the next phase is more difficult than anything else, because one and the other have to uh, respect the law of each other, particularly Serbia. We have not come to the most difficult issues that the lake in the north, the property that Kosovo, Bajartisari, and Eusta. EU analogies too that is entitled to administer property within the territory borders of Kosovo and Serbia does not recognize yet. Mm -hmm. How we make Serbia recognize the legal entity, the authority, the law of Kosovo within the whole territory of Kosovo. That's key. Second thing is uh, the pace of international recognition and membership for Kosovo to international organizations is not sufficient, it's too slow. So we need to come to a process where agreements between the two allows more recognition, particularly of non-EU non member states, non-recognizers. Mm -hmm. The uh, five non-recognizers. Five yeah. non Probably not Spain, Cyprus, but, but everybody believes so that, that can remain agreed, with, yeah. a, with a treaty, mm -hmm. a peace a treaty between the full norm or normalization package between the two countries, uh, uh, these were recognized. We don't see because the political tensions, not tensions between the people, tensions between politicians mm -hmm. you see, have come, have grown. And this also relates to the domestic politics in Serbia and in Kosovo. And that's the danger because uh, Vucic has more ambitions there. I'll come than, back to this in a, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes. Let me ask Lulzi Maci still about the agreement. Looking at it from an outsider's perspective, is this agreement more important for Kosovo or more important for Serbia? Which agreement? The, the, the whole Brussels package, let's say, the whole Brussels process. Is it more important for Serbia or more important for Kosovo? And a related question, which I want to then pose to Dusan, is are, they, are both sides serious in pursuing this agreement or is there a political agenda behind it? Uh, I think that the agreements actually are important for both. Mm -hmm. And uh, it depends from agreement to agreement, and uh, it changes the how to say the interest of the parties in those specific ag mm -hmm. agreements. So we cannot make a specific measure to say that this agreement is more that all the agreements are more in favor of Kosovo or the others mm -hmm. are more in favor of Serbia. Mm. Uh, the, uh, this is quite uh, actually impossible to make such a kind of estimation. Nevertheless, the, the, the problem is in the process, in my opinion, because uh, the entire uh, logic of the dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade started with a mantra of constructive ambiguity. And the problem is here that uh, each, sides, each side uh, interprets uh, the agreements as they wish. Mm -hmm. And there is no arbiter EU is not taking the role of guarantee, mm. uh, of guarantor for, for, implementa uh, for implementing these agreements, but they are uh, using the back door. So it's uh, <coughs> negotiations for accession with Serbia and MSA negotiations with uh, Kosovo for implementation of, of, of this agreement. Uh, this constructive ambiguity because of overstretching of EU with the other crisis, especially with the refugee crisis, and uh, the crisis in Crimea has overstretched EU's capacity to deal with external uh, relations and to be focused uh, on, uh, in the Balkans and to settle this uh, problem which is old almost three decades. And uh, so from constructive ambiguity Right now, we, uh, we, uh, we are, I think, at this stage of non-strategic ambiguity because there is no strategy coming from EU how to deal with the uh, entire Western Balkans. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, the uh, parties are stalled in their positions. And 
and uh, there is no will for the progress, actually. Why there is no will? Because there is a dead carrot in EU. I must say in one thing, that the uh, lack of unity of EU uh, in uh, foreign relations regarding to the Balkans is projecting political instability in the region. So somehow, uh, the, these countries which are not recognizing Kosovo and the lack of unity within EU is becoming a Trojan horse regarding the uh, future and stability in the region. And this, the same goes with Macedonia as well. Mm -hmm. Just let me recall a fact. Macedonia got candidacy status in 2005. Mm -hmm. What Macedonia got out of it? Nothing. Mm -hmm. And 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 and, yeah. and 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 this is very problematic, mm -hmm. and I think that we cannot actually make the next sti serious step in normalization, in full normalizations, uh, normalization of relations, until Brussels uh, divisions in Brussels get solved. This is going to be very problematic. Mm -hmm. Dusan, let me ask you: Is Serbia serious in this negotiation process with Kosovo, or is it simply done to pacify the European Union? to make progress in the uh, accession process, the closing the chapters in the Aqua Comunita. H how do you see it from Belgrade? It's not so easy to <laughs> directly to respond. But, uh, you know, if you are looking at the process, we started with Boris Tadic, 2011. It was more simulation of the process than a real process mm -hmm. of negotiation. We have two years talking about freedom of movements and blah, blah, blah. After that comes this, how I say, the new government, Progressive Party, and was accepted in uh, General Assembly for UN, UN uh, resolution for about the talk, thanks to the Tadic, who switched on the European side, manipulating with Moscow. And uh, the first uh, sign that something is wrong was uh, President Nikolic. Because according to the first idea, the main negotiations had to be presidents, not prime ministers in government. In the middle of this, how to say, assembly in New York, Nikolic announced that he will not participate in the process and he removed that to the government. The European Union accepted just to start the process. And uh, I could say that this, until 2015, April, Serbi Serbia and Kosovo, they were really serious about that. They tried to do that. For that, they signed so many, including comprehensive agreement. Uh, but what's happened? It's first of all, we have unstable government. And politicians are thinking about the elections. Mm -hmm. If you have elections from four years, you will work two years seriously, two years you will manipulate. But in Serbia case, we have elections each year and a half. Basically, politicians only are thinking about the, uh, collecting the votes. And now I think that, uh, for example, Vucic is spending more energy in uh, engineering, uh, security engineering, uh, marketizing, propaganda, then to implement agreement. That's for the second. It's not so easy to implement. I will give you one example. Originary idea of IBM come from Serbia. Serbia hardly, hardly moved that, pushed that uh, idea. Kosovo was by side. In the one moment, America, which is important moment. If European Union and America is not talking with one voice, no success. America supported Serbia, Kosovo accepted IBM, and what's happened? Uh, Riot on the north, because the business people working in the shadow smuggling, they were against IBM. And Serbia, which initiated the process, stopped, started to block, and after two, three years, it's accepted but all trying calculated with the interest of an illegal economy and uh, green economy. And just uh, for the end, uh, I think that this uh, so-called European future as the promised carrot is not fresh. And uh, when Margherini come, 
she made a big mistake, believing that both sides are so motivated to do the things by themselves. Mm -hmm. And that only <coughs> Carroll will be, okay, you are making process without what uh, the friends say, without any, uh, how to say, mediation, guarantees, pressure. Sometimes pressure is needed just to help people as excuse. And basically, the leaders realized that it's not basically needed to implement. In the end, Serbia now is more faced with the question, yes, Washington and Brussels made also one bad excuse for Serbia. They accepted the Russian interpretation of uh, uh, Euro-Atlantic integration. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, trying to explain to the people in Serbia that it's possible to be the member of European Union, mm -hmm. not to be the member of NATO. And that's a huge mistake. Dushan, I want to come back to the whole Russian right. question in, in a minute, but let me turn to Naim. Every so often there seems to be a provocation, whether it's this train, whether it's uh, war building, whether it's attempted um, arrests of former uh, KLA fighters. Who is behind this? Is it the government? Is it some elements of the Serbian government? Is it locals? Is it Russia? Um, as it is estimated, this, will, this process will last a decade, 15 years eventually. Mm -hmm. And this is important to know the steps. Uh, having that in mind, I'm not, I'm not concerned about incidents, mm -hmm. because we'll have incidents. Throughout, even if the process was perfect, we'll have incidents. But is the but, but are the, those designed to unsettle the, the process? But the problem it, it's unsettled because we have no tools and mechanisms and will to manage those incidents. Mm -hmm. And because we have no tools and, and will to manage, it leads to the to the answer because there's some a lot has been driven politically. It's it's a lot is by policy po, uh, poli, at policy level. Mm -hmm. Citizens are being engaged in provocations. Members of communities different, but it's actually politics. From a Serbian point of view, they need uh, incidents to show to, to the voters that they are not giving up to Belgrade to the Serbs. Now, uh, f to be correct, I don't think either side wants a conflict. I think uh, they are playing with the control situations and uh, and they are playing with the current status quo how we develop a satisfactory dialogue this, uh, where, but we still have a control and have not does not force us to change big policies mm -hmm. and that's again creates a new status quo each side has done enough to maintain the process satisfy Brussels to some degree international community but it uh, does not require, particularly from a Serbian Belgrade point of view, does not require major changes in the policy. Uh, citizens and the institutions, members of the institutions, are being drawn, driven to the to the provocations to provoke. We against their will, I think against their will. I've talked to hundreds of Serbs, and they, what has ever happened the last two three months in the north, it was totally against the will, their will. Here in Pristina. Uh, it's the, the question, the answer, uh, the, the answer is very basic. We have not yet set the, the policy on the state consolidation, state building. We fundamentally disagree mm -hmm. on the ways <coughs> the state, how the state should function. And the political distrust is huge and destructive. And the, this clear message that without strong institutions, consolidated democratic and accountable institutions, parliament, and the political consensus, there is no, uh, 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 there is no meaningful dialogue, negotiations with Serbia. Mm -hmm. and there is no full, and that relates to the integration of minorities, that relates to the reforms, EU required reforms, and relate to the regional issues like the dialogue with Serbia. Mm -hmm. We have not set the policy. Where everybody talks about certain policies, it is not the cost of a set policy in place yet. Mm -hmm. And that allows different interpretations, different views, different ambitions sometimes. And that makes the, the process, defining the process and the consolidation of the state slow. And, and very, very slow 
with a, with a, with a frequent crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, to come back to the answer to the, I mean, look, for, for credits of the EU, if there was no EU initiating this, it would have not been dialogue between the two. But the best times of the dialogue were, was when Ashton and Clinton were traveling to the region mm -hmm. in the capacity of state secretary. And that era is gone. Mm -hmm. We don't see that. It's gone. I, and we don't see it coming. How, and then we have, uh, have to understand, in Serbia, in Kosovo, there is no, it's not going to be a Chancellor Merkel coming to Serbia and saying, you do this, or a state Brussels coordinated efforts to, uh, to that level. How we generate among us a degree of will to continue dialogue, to conclude the process, to advance the process at mm -hmm. least, further to the next stages. And we don't see, mm -hmm. we don't see elites willing or being happy that that this leads right. about. The, 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 the next question, Lozim. What impact does a change of government have on the negotiations between Pristina and Belgrade? In other words, now we have the election of President Vucic in Serbia. There's a possibility of new elections in Kosovo. I know it delays the process, as Dusan was saying, because you're preoccupied with internal politics. But do you see any more breakthroughs with new governments coming in? I, actually not. Because, uh, as Naim said, the problem is in Brussels and in Washington. Mm -hmm. There is no will and there is no carrot. They will play with this game and in the future, but the, the problem is that EU integration process of the region and NATO integration process, thanks God that Montenegro got member mm -hmm. right now, and it is fundamental for regional security. M maybe we will have a chance to mm -hmm. talk later about it. Uh, uh, but but the, 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 uh, there is not a clear strategy even from Brussels, what Brussels wants with this process, and there is no strate strategy even from Kosovo and Serbia. Mm -hmm. And even, even if Kosovo and Serbia would have a kind of strategy, this has to be accepted by Brussels. So what, what, what I'm trying to say, and talking about the process that would last 10 or 15 years, uh, it, I, if somebody looks at it from the beginning, we can see that it's going to be I, I, it's going to be a failed process, because countries. Let's remind. Uh, uh, let's go back to a point in time. Uh, uh, for example, in 1997, Slovakia was in a very bad shape. Mm -hmm. In 2004. Slovakia got EU member. Mm -hmm. And right now, because EU doesn't know what to do and they have internal problems regarding the Balkans uh, between each other, <coughs> they are imposing to us this, uh, 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 as I am named it a bit earlier, non-strategic ambiguity, mm -hmm. because there is no strategy in Brussels. And this is buying time uh, this is strategy for buying time by both sides, especially by Brussels, because uh, people in the region, I think, that they would like to be sooner integrated in EU rather than later, mm -hmm. but uh, because of these internal problems in EU, right now we have, how we, we, we are uh, at the state of, uh, of uh, non having, uh, uh, in, in the phase in which EU is impossible to employ any tools for, uh, uh, for advancing this uh, process. Mm -hmm. This is my opinion about it. Dusan, uh, uh, regarding Serbia itself, there's a question that's always, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to answer this. How important is Kosovo for the Serbian voter? I mean, how, where does it rank vis-a-vis -vis economic conditions, living standards, EU entry? I mean, sure. is this a political question rather than a social question? It's more than a political question. And just to add it, uh, it's not only Brussels, which no strategy. The local government, Serbian government, no any strategy, any vision about the future and about the problems like Kosovo, mm -hmm. problem in Serbian, uh, how to say, identity, this identity question. Uh, I will now not talk about history, but this identity question. Uh, that's first. The second, uh, Kosovo is more a symbol of uh, for the people who were in the, on the power in Serbia mm -hmm. 19th and who are now, mm -hmm. their successors now on the power, as the symbol of uh, losing territories and control. Mm -hmm. That was the last war 
in which Serbia was involved, and last was uh, lost it in the one brutal way. Of course, NATO in the end signed agreement with the uh, ex former, I don't know the name, Serbia mm -hmm. in Kumanovo, uh, about the technical cooperation. Basically, is the situation more complex than in German case, the Second World War. Germans were completely defeated. Mm -hmm. And it was clearly said, you <coughs> lost the war. In Serbia, we have the one mixture of, uh, how to say, feelings about the Milosevic period of time. Many people are believing that Serbs never be in the war, that they not committed any, uh, how to say, crime. That basically, that we are completely innocent. We were just attacked from abroad. Mm. The, this perception, uh, for that I mentioned NATO. Mm -hmm. For that is really important to put on agenda so-called security package, including human security. We are neighbors, in the end we are neighbors. We have to live, we could not move. Or we could not kill everybody just to clean territory. We have to live. For living, we have to understand each other. We need the human security plus the, uh, this hard security. Uh, without that framework, losers, by definition, are looking for some revenge. That's something which pushing Serbian elite toward the Moscow. Mm -hmm. And Moscow is uh, really, uh, in the skilled way, playing this game. Moscow was backing strikes, but nobody knows that. They formally protested, but they did not do any action against. In perception of the local Serbs in Kosovo, mm -hmm. on the north and in Serbia, uh, Russia was on the our side. This question also connected with orthodoxy. Economically, it's more uh, myth than reality. Everybody is talking in Serbia about the lignats and uh, uh, how to say the p potentials and capacity of Kosovo for producing energy as the hour cause the privatization process was not made in appropriate way. We had two privatization, one by Milosevic, which completely how to say replaces the rights to governing the uh, managing the property to the Serb Serbian company and the church, and after the spin off, is a really catastrophic. Uh, uh, privatization made by the EU. Mm -hmm. EU dislikes to talk about that. It's pushing that issue. And I'm talking now, when you have two unsolved issues, one is property, and the second, uh, 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 insecurity, which is mm -hmm. uh, all time producing your fears, you could not manage the process. Mm. For Serbia, it's really existential issue. Yeah. Let me turn to you, Naim, and I want to introduce another element into this mix. In recent statements by uh, Albanian Prime Minister Edi Rama, the idea that uh, potential unification between Kosovo and Albania cannot be excluded. And of course, this, this has been exploited not just in Skopje, but in Belgrade, by Russia, and so forth. How is this contributing, if or the reverse, preventing any agreement between Serbia and Kosovo? I think correctly everybody understands that this is a total bluff. It's a political bluff. Uh, HIDA has to do that because they are failing on the basic reforms. They're failing to meet the criteria for to launch the negotiations. Uh, and any other statement in Kosovo, it's all related to the domestic political developments with a high degree of anger in relation to the, to the European Union, particularly the visa liberalization. Mm -hmm. So if Kosovo elites had secured visa liberalization for Kosovo citizens, then the discourse we have seen, have seen a drastic uh, change in the discourse. Uh, and yes, one uses the other's comments. We saw how use uh, Albania versus Skopje were used uh, the last several months over the platform, over the Tirana meeting, and they continue when Vucic and Rama left. And this also tells one story. In the, that Vucic and Rama relations were personal, were not intergovernmental, interstate relations, and that can be screwed any time. And there is no perspective of good neighbor relations yet put in place. Uh, it does not worry me, and it should not worry any, anybody. I think it, but m crucially, it presents 
the failure of the elites, Kosovo and Albania, and then the region, to develop a clear policy where the state wants to go domestically and where, how we want to develop relations and see relations in the region. That's clear. And that's a failure of elites. Uh, paradoxically, across the region, Serbia negotiation open chapters, open chapters on negotiations and become less democratic. Mm -hmm. Something totally wrong. Unlike with Macedonia that has been screwed by the two Bucharest meeting, a NATO Miss Summit, because if that has hap had happened, Gravesky would have done, not been in power in 2016, 17. So let's make it clear. But same with Montenegro, same with Albania, that the more, as much as they approach the reapprochement uh, with the EU, they become less democratic. Uh, they become more distant from citizens. Citizens' participation is less available there. Distrust is grows on the institutions. Uh, look at the whole region. I mean, the distrust in the institutions is, is, is drastically grows. And there's something wrong in relation to the European policies, mm -hmm. to the, the consolidation of the institutions and the political establishments in the region. We, we are trying with the Brussels uh, think tanks in the region, trying to say, guys, you have to change the, 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 the way you cooperate with the political elites. And we have to go around because that mainstream process has worked somewhere else, no longer works there, mm -hmm. here. And we all have to change the process and work with the citizens and, and in help increase the demand and the pressure from bottom up mm -hmm. for changes. But fundamentally, it presents a, a clear, for me, a statement. The reconciliation in the Western Balkans is incomplete, uh, unlike the Eastern Europe is incomplete. 20 years after the war in Bosnia, 18 years after the war in Kosovo, the little progress that we made probably is not irreversible. Mm -hmm. And, and worries, uh, more worrisome, we don't see when Serbia and Kosovo will sign a treaty of peace and mutual uh, recognition. Mutual recognition. Mm -hmm. Macedonia pacify, mm -hmm. Bosnia pacify. And this is why Kosovo-Serbia relations play an important role in this mm -hmm. mantra of the Western Balkans and the former, or concluding the wars, former Yugoslavia, because EU will have to invest as much as the societies of these two nations. Let me turn to, to Luzim regarding, is this still a fear or a suspicion that of a Serbian plan to partition Kosovo? or somehow create a two-entity system, much like Bosnia-Herzegovina? In, in other words, what is the Serbian position on the, on, the, on the minority question here? Well, until the visit of Chancellor Merkel in 2011 in Belgrade, the agenda of partition was an open uh, policy issue of Belgrade. Mm -hmm. So they were pushing for it. Mm -hmm. It was Tadic and it was uh, Dacic who both of them were, mm. were pushing this uh, agenda openly up, uh, up to then. Then situation changed with the visit of uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel. Mm -hmm. But I think that deep inside the Serbian establishment is uh, stands still the idea uh, at least getting a federal state in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. In in uh, in order to how to say to accept the independence of Kosovo, and I think that deep inside it is their intention. Uh, I don't think that they will achieve this, but the intention I think is still prevailing in in Belgrade, mm -hmm. and uh, we have not to be blind on the, on, on this. On the other side. I'm uh, going back a, bi uh, uh, a bit to the declarations uh, on unification of Kosovo with Albania. Uh, this is totally irrealistic, and let me explain why this is ir ir it's not realistic. Because Albania is NATO member. If Albania wishes to join with Kosovo, in that case, uh, the precedent of unification of Germany mm -hmm. will prevail, mm -hmm. and we know how things went there. 
because all NATO countries had to agree with the unification of Germany because it is about extension of Article 5 guarantees. Mm -hmm. And in that case, unified Germany could become a NATO member. The very same rule would apply and for Albania and Kosovo. Mm -hmm. But who's going to give the consent in NATO for, for this unification? Nobody. And, uh, 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 and uh, that's why it is totally unrealistic. Uh, populistic elites in the region are using these declarations for increasing populism within their own countries mm -hmm. because, in essence, uh, and this is how they are feeding autocracy. Mm -hmm. And I am very much disappointed because instead of moving towards uh, advancing democracy in the region uh, and for building what is called during Clinton's time uh, d democratic security, mm -hmm. we are ending up to autocratic security. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this is a very dangerous sign because if you look what is happening from Budapest to Ankara, the very same uh, pattern of governance is starting to prevail in the region. And we are somehow, and, and, and the region will become very unstable in the future if uh, this uh, trend goes on. Good point. Let me turn to, to Dusan. Uh, from the Serbian perspective, is there still this, uh, uh, let's say, ambition to partition Kosovo in, in government circles? Uh, uh, still there is some, mm, how to say, uh, dreams about that, mm -hmm. more dreams than real project. And for that, uh, for that point of view, I'm not sure that, uh, okay, publicly, uh, media, um, Vucic people are strongly com commented uh, Rama statement, blah, 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 but I'm not sure that they are not in favor of that. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's something what is, uh, you know, the idea to have all, uh, uh, how to say, co-patriots together in one state, is the old idea of ethno-nationalism. Mm -hmm. Now is the fashion of it, ethno-nationalism. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, if you could not over, uh, offer many things at the local level, you will use this story to show to the Democrats and others that you are also able to manage to solve the problems for, for example, for the Albanians in pressure of value. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting moment when the ex-president of Albania, Nishani, come without any, uh, how to say, support from Nikoli, just come in the one municipality, Presheva of course, with the knowledge and assistance of Vucic. Uh, why I'm talking that? For Belgrade, manipulation, is, any manipulation is important. Uh, for if you have one minority, Albanians in central Serbia, which could not decide what is the capital, what is the mother state, Kosovo, which is in the process of building, mm -hmm. or Albania. That's really good way to manipulate. Which textbooks you will take, mm -hmm. Tirana or Pristina? Behind of that, you have the clear statements of Vucic. Mm -hmm. Okay, what will happen if I will say as, uh, as uh, Rama that uh, Republika Srpska has to join to the Serbia? There's the compensation instrument is useful. But what point is the normalization process? So basically delivering the so sovereignty to the Pristina on the whole territory. And Vucic, nobody in Serbia, because the process was not transparent, n is not ready now to risk and to say to people openly, people, Pristina is controlling the territory. Mm -hmm. And that's the one moment in which uh, Serbia is really welcome the idea of the great Albania, blah, 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 and so on. Uh, also, they mismanipulated the case of Haradinaj, trying to present the Ramush is the leader of Pan-Albanian forces, organized crime, so on, so on. They know very well who is who. Mm -hmm. They are cooperating. That's my last point. I am not excluding that Hashim and Rama and Vucic well cooperated behind the stage. Mm -hmm. Subject to come back to in the future. We'll come back also to the Russian question, but very last question for Naim and Luzim, if you could be brief, because we only have two minutes. What more, because we've hinted at what the EU should be doing, what more should the US administration be doing between Kosovo and Serbia? 
a certain and clear agenda of normalization. The legal binding agreement set in the EU conclusions is an empty box. It has to be filled. Description, setting a clear agenda, a roadmap of the process, helping Brussels roadmap, engaging a number of key member states, Germany, Austria, to help EIS chief, because she she's, is too, has too much on the plate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and prioritizing normalization bilateral relations. The dialogue has been so far about the North, territory, institutions, police, freedom of movement, nothing on the bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. We don't see exchanges between the governments. We don't, they don't sit even to talk basic things of education for kids. It's bilateral relations as a clear roadmap for the future, for complete full normalization. Thank you. Lulizin, last word. Two words. Two words. Partnership for peace for Kosovo. Kosovo is the single country in the entire Euro uh, 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 Asian space which is not member of Partnership for Peace. Mm -hmm. And it is a black hole. And this is a must. So this should be the priority mm -hmm. of US government in my opinion. And also uh, building the track for confidence building measures in security and defense between uh, Kosovo and Serbia. U.S. as a leader of NATO should take the, the initiative about it. Okay. Thank you very much, all three of you. I think that was a very lively discussion. I'm sure topics that we're going to come back to again and again. And as I said, that the Russian question I'll come back to. It's a huge question for the region. I'll come back to in the future show. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you. Unfortunately, we have already come to the end of today's show. I have greatly enjoyed being with you and with my colleagues here at RTK. Good night, everyone. Stay healthy and be productive and remain optimistic. See you all very soon. Mirupavshim.